it about coffee and tea that instantly creates an atmosphere for connecting? A safe space for discussing ideas, culture, world news, theoretical circumstances, and hopes for the future. The drinks can leave us stimulated or calm, yet somehow less inhibited, comforted. These drinks have always been more than a beverage for me. I couldn't explain it when I was younger, but as I began to travel and meet people from vastly different cultures, I began to wonder if coffee and tea are as deeply rooted into society as they are for me. So I set off on a journey to see if my hypothesis was true, approaching the matter to better understand humanity as a whole, to better understand what it is that links us all together across different backgrounds, communities, and cultures. Could it be that we are all connected? And could it be that we are all connected through a common cup? I love coffee and I like tea, but I live for those moments shared between a cup. <laughs> There's a beautiful quote by Norwegian ethnologist Thor Heyerdahl that says, progress is man's ability to complicate simplicity. I'm not here to complicate coffee or tea because there is beauty in its simplicity. However, so many of us in today's society take these simple acts for granted. And so many of us are looking for real genuine moments of connection. I think that coffee and tea are ways to connect with our own self, to connect with others. There are ways to connect to our heritage, to our ancestors. And I'd like to think that some form of progress comes from the simple act of sharing a coffee or tea with someone. My coffee journey before this had really been confined to cafes. But in order to understand how coffee played a role as this cultural phenomenon, I wanted to talk to the people at the source of it all. I wanted to understand coffee better as a crop, uh, its role in the environment, and I wanted to see how coffee shaped a community. Coffee is more than, than just coffee. Coffee is part of a culture. Coffee is part of uh, hopes, family and community goals. Coffee in Costa Rica is also part of our economic uh, democracy because coffee provided economic opportunity for thousands and thousands of small farmers in Costa Rica for, for many years. And, and coffee is today a good opportunity to do education about sustainability. Mm -hmm. And coffee is a great drink. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Coffee 
provided the economy for all of our, all of my family. So today, my father, he is still alive. My mom already died, but uh, working in a in a coffee field takes me uh, very positive memories of my childhood. Uh, working with my brothers and sisters in the same uh, uh, farm, working with my parents. Coffee is also a kind of um, crop and activity that uh, provides uh, opportunities for small scale farmers around the world. Mm -hmm. So I like those kind of crops. Uh, cro coffee, is, in the way we do coffee here in Costa Rica, is not a, a monocrop. If you go around most of the small coffee farmers, and we are more than 50,000 in Costa Rica, you will see that we integrate coffee with bananas, with plantain, with oranges, with avocados, with some uh, chickens, with goats. So coffee is, is a kind of crop that in the way we do is integrated with different uh, activities in the farm. And I like this because I grew up in the, in the tropical rainforest. And what is natural to this forest is biodiversity. So I like looking at our crops integrated with the, with the rest of the environment. Las épocas difíciles son los, la variación del clima y algunas enfermedades que se dan en el cultivo del café como la roya y el colgallo principalmente. Y en el, en, en el último año la broca, el mm -hmm. café. When we talk about uh, conservation and sustainability, most of what you see today in Monteverde, which is positive for the community, positive for the environment, is because of the work of the local community. So a way to, to think about as a community is even when protecting the environment, is not only protecting what is inside the borders of a farm. Our farm is uh, environmentally connected with other farms. So, uh, for example, um, day after tomorrow, we will be planting trees, uh, native trees in a different farm. And we are not charging the owner of this farm for doing this project because we understand that uh, the forest in their farm and the forest in our farm is connected. And we need to strengthen the connections between the foreign forests. This is where it becomes very important that what, what we produce or the production we have um, be as careful with the environment as possible. And in recent years, uh, more and more um, interest in not only producing a good quality coffee, but also uh, protecting the environment as, as the coffee is produced. Right. And uh, in that aspect, uh, um, our farm, Barsan Farm with Café Monteverde and with Life program, uh, we have put very special attention to that. Uh, and I would say that's one of the things that distinguishes uh, Café Monteverde is in, in having um, a system that looks for sustainability in the long term. ¿Quién va contando? Most of uh, visitors, most of the students, they, they connect sustainability with preserving the, the environment, preserving the forest, preserving the, the great biodiversity we have here in the cloud forest, protecting the water, the, reducing our use of pesticides. But in order to be sustainable as a farmer, as a community, as a, as a country, we also have to address social and economic issues. And um, so sustainability is also about social responsibility, which means that um, we provide as possible the best wages for the workers. We provide them training support. We provide them a house where to stay because in Costa Rica, uh, the, the reality is that many coffee pickers are coming from Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. They are migrants, so they need a, a place where to live. Uh, we provide them in case they want to uh, land 
if they want to grow some food while staying in Costa Rica because they stay here three to four months. We have to do the best in what we uh, have some control, our farm, our community. But today we have to ask all those connected in the coffee chain, from the bean to the cup, to be aware about the, the great uh, responsibility we have today to save a life for the future generations. It is not fair to just enjoy life yourself as individual if you understand that the, the community, the country, the planet is asking for, for humans to recuperate the environment. So I would like people when buying coffee, for example, to check if that coffee supports the environment, if that coffee is really supporting life in this planet. So the, um, the taste of the, the coffee is mm. more than just about quality. It's about uh, the environmental and social responsibility that this coffee is, is uh, providing. The prominence of coffee in today's society is apparent everywhere. But in my experience, I could think of no place better in the world that has so much emphasis on coffee and coffee culture than Italy. I mean, Italians are espresso. The first thing you offer someone is coffee. In Italy, you wake up, have a coffee. Then you go downstairs an hour later, have another coffee. Then you go meet up for a friend, have another express, remember, espresso pretty much. Then you go have lunch, then a coffee. Then an hour later, another one. And like we were talking with the, the owner inside, 10 to 15 coffees a day he drinks. When I was 18, I did a study abroad program in Urbino, which is a little small renaissance town in the middle of the mountains. And I fell in love with it so much that I decided I wanted to move back at any cost, no matter what I had to do, any kind of work. And I did one more semester in Florida, and then I came back when I was 19. I ended up doing a year in Bologna, a year in Paris, a year in Amsterdam, four years in Rome, five years in Russia, and I've been back around five years in Rome now. And it's the passion of the city that I have for history and for the architecture. It's just something that doesn't go away. It stays with you. It's a very interesting story, and most people don't know that coffee almost didn't make it in Italy. In the 16th century, Venice was a huge trader with the Arab world. And so what happened is from Egypt, they got these coffee beans and they started brewing coffee and it became something very popular in Venice. They realized this drink was diabolical. Why was it something mysterious inside was making everyone so hyper and concentrated? So I thought, not very Christian, not good. So finally the Pope at the time, Clement VIII, at the end of the 16th century said, let me check this out. So he went and tasted it and he decided it's okay. And the second he gave his okay, it exploded all across Europe. The whole idea of actual coffee. So coffee houses sprung up, not only in Italy, but across, obviously because of Christianity, across the entire European continent. After sharing a coffee with Brandon from The Roman Guy, I had a better knowledge of the history of coffee houses in Italy. Once he mentioned Venice being the first city in Italy to truly embrace coffee by providing a coffee house to enjoy the drink, it wasn't enough to simply hear about the history of coffee culture in Venice. I had to see it for myself. Which led me to the oldest cafe in Europe, built in 1720 to see history, tradition, and coffee culture upheld and celebrated. 
Allora, il caffè Florian è uno dei più antichi caffè del mondo. Venire qua significa fare un viaggio nella storia, è come entrare in un museo. La tradizione in questo senso del caffè Florian è antichissima. Quando Floriano Francesconi lo apre nel 1720 è proprio la personalità di questo grande eh, caffettiere che fa sì che questo diventi il caffè più frequentato e questa tradizione è rimasta perché assolutamente noi abbiamo motivo di pensare che questo sia il luogo dove l'accoglienza è totale, c'è un rapporto dialettico, visti i tempi, assolutamente importante con la gente che lo frequenta. La cosa più importante è che qui puoi recuperare il tempo, puoi stare in relax totale e questa è la cosa più bella, visto che al giorno d'oggi si vive freneticamente. Un po' difficile da tradurre, ma... Caffè Florian è il salotto buono di Venezia e Venezia è sempre stata una città accogliente. Noi da sempre una delle cose che ci contraddistinguono è il senso dell'ospitalità. A volte entrano dei giovani che non hanno i soldi per bere un caffè al Caffè Florian, entrano, guardano, girano e noi li lasciamo fare perché il Florian non è solo patrimonio nostro ma è patrimonio dell'umanità come questa città. E effettivamente è così, io dico a tutti che eh, oggi per parlare si usa Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, per secoli questo è stato Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, perché era il vero modo di relazionarsi con la gente e a Venezia non ci sono le automobili, quindi le relazioni umane sono molto più facili. Allora si dice vieni a bere un caffè, andiamo e qua quotidianamente ci sono rapporti tra persone sociali, anche storie d'amore, perché se tu fai così ascolti casa nuova, sta girando nell'aria e ci parla nell'orecchio e ci dice vai al Florian perché là l'amore, nasce l'amore, molte storie d'amore sono nate per Florian, dicono che baciarsi al Florian porti bene e io ho molti episodi che possono confermare la mia teoria. In the morning when I wake up, the first thing I have to drink is a coffee. Think about the coffee is all over the world. So people can have at the same time uh, millions of uh, coffee you know, in their hands. So the connection is uh, that so many people is drinking coffee at the same time. And a different way, of course, because uh, in, in, in Italy most it's espresso with a coffee machine, you know, but in uh, Turkey they have a Turkey coffee, America they have a, their kind of coffee, you know, which is the Americans. But it's, the connection to me is that one, to have at the same time people drinking coffee. La ricordo perfettamente perché avevo nove anni e io andavo a casa, sentivo il profumo del caffè. Mia nonna non voleva darmi il caffè e mi dava l'orge e diceva perché il caffè fa male ai bambini. Allora, la, a, arrivato a nove anni, è, sa, è stata una sorta di iniziazione alla di adolescenza, quindi il caffè è stato il tramite per diventare grandi, adulti. Nel momento in cui me l'hanno dato, io ho detto sono diventato un uomo. <ride> Due tazze unite mi fanno pensare che il caffè è sempre uno strumento per stare assieme, di convivialità, di amore verso la vita e soprattutto di un momento di una parentesi di relax di due persone che finalmente non si parlano attraverso uno strumento tecnico, attraverso un telefono, ma si parlano davanti. Even in makeshift communities and short-term lifestyles, we see that coffee and tea, sharing those moments together, connecting, are vital components to everyday life. When I think of my time climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, I think of those morning coffees shared with the porters and my team and those evening teas that were just an integral part of everyday life on the mountain.
I've been working as a guide for now 15 years. I like Lemosho and Machame route because normally uh, you face different challenges every day. If you take a longer day, like seven days, it's better because you give the body time to acclimatize. But sometimes if you take shorter days, it's harder because you don't have uh, enough time to give the body uh, uh, time to acclimatize. So sometimes it's harder for the clients also. Hiking to the summit. Normally you are tired, you feel dizzy, you feel sleepy, you feel cold. So those combinations makes the harder. But normally after you get to the summit, you feel like you receive a new energy and then you become happy again. Nikiamka asubui. Mimi ni pota, afu ni waita. Ninamsha wageni asubui na hapo maji ya kunawa. Baada ya hapo wanakunywa na hapo breakfast. Baada ya breakfast ninaandaa mzigo wangu. Ninafunga naondoka kimpu moja kwenda nyingine. Ah, mahusiano ni mazuri. Tunashirikiana pamoja kufanya kazi. Ni marafiki wa karibu. Ndio maana tunakuwa katika safari pamoja. Kinacho nivutia kufanya kazi mlimani. Kwanza kabisa kwamba ni kupata hela. Na baada kupata hela inanisaidia kwa ajili ya kuendesha maisha yangu na familia. Mahusiano ni mazuri kwa sababu wote ni timu moja na tunapendana hata wenzetu tunapokutana njiani labda mwenzako amepata na tatizo tunasaidiana tunapambana wakati wa kazi yangu inapokuwa ngumu ni wakati wa mvua nyingi mvua zinavyonyesha kwa sababu unafika kempu kempu ukifika kempu hali umeloana hema zimeloa kwa hiyo mazingira yanakuwa magumu sana. Wakati ninakuwa na furaha wakati afya yangu iko ni nzuri na hali ya kimaisha pesa na maisha yakiwa mazuri nikiwa na hali ya yani na mahitaji yangu yote. Naona hali yangu itakuwa nzuri. Nakuwa na fuu. Wakati wote mimi nakuwa na furaha zaidi pale ambako kwamba ninatimiza kile ambacho nakifanya mfano kama siku ya, ya kumaliza kazi siku nakuwa na furaha kupita siku ambayo nimeanza kazi. Ase mgumu ipo wakati unakuta saingine kama vitu vingine havina maji kwa hiyo tunapata maji kwa shida mahusiano ni mazuri kwa sababu tunashirikiana kwa pamoja ukipatwa na tatizo tunasaidiana ana furaha napata furaha wakati unakuta tunapofanya kazi kama hizi nakuta kampuni zingine kama hii ya kwetu ambayo tuko nayo tuna furaha kwa sababu nakuta kampuni yetu inamwambia mgeni dola kumi kwa siku mpaka tano kwa tunapata furaha tukipata na riziki pia tunafurahi the first time i was 16 uh, it was a school trip uh, i remember it was really hard for me <laughs> yeah we were doing a um, marangu route was really hard for me i remember so now i can imagine some of the clients how they feel during their first time i do this uh, about 28 to 32 times a year so normally three or two or three times a month so it's a uh, many many times to the summit i don't even remember I want to introduce you to the man behind the tent who's been doing all of my cooking. He's been making an amazing food, Chakula Tam. Um, <laughs> right here, Daniel. Danny, we call him. <laughs> Tom Sana, Danny. <laughs> Ninapendelea kahawa. Kinywa kahawa na jisikia vizuri. Tofauti na kunywa chai ya kahawa ya majani. I like to have a coffee with the client up here the mountain because because uh, cold and having coffee that's my favorite. Coffee helps a lot um, 
First they keep warm from the coffee and then the warm sometimes like they boost it's boosting the body uh, like to get acclimatized also to the height. Yeah, will help. The role of connecting with a coffee or a tea is pretty apparent at this point. But it begs the question, has coffee always been a social drink? And to better understand this, I had to go to the birthplace, the origin of coffee. ለሶቡና <laughs> Yeah. 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 ብዙ ከወጪ ከወጣ በኋላ ነው ይሄ ገና ይተለቅሞ ውጣታማ ምን ነው ነው ሄ ደማጭ ትብራ ቆሎ ይጅባ እኔ አሁን በእውነት ብዙ ነው መመክራቸው ለነዚህ ለህፃናት ሞነ ላዋቆቹ ቡና እንድተክሉ ባንክ ካብ እንድይዙ ደሞ ቡና እንዳይሸመጠት አንድ አንድ ያገራችን ውጥ ስለሆነ አንድ አንድ ፍሬ እንድለቅሙ እናግራቸዋለሁ ገዝ በፊትም ባላፊነ ስለምሰራ ስብሰባ ላይም በግዝ ነው ነው ምናገረው በግልም እናገራለሁ ስብሰባ ላይም ተነስቼ ሐሳብ እሰጣለሁ ቡና በጥራት እንድያዝ እንዳይሸመጠት ደሞ በውስቱ ካፍት ምናም ገፍቶ ቡናው እንዳይበላሽ ብዬ መክራቸዋለሁ በእውነት እኔ ማስተላለም ወዶ እንግዲህ አሁን ቡናችን ለቅመን ያው ለውጪ ነው በዩነና አማካይነት ምን ሰዶ ይሄ ቃይ ቃይ ቡና ለዩነኑ ነው እና ስረክቦ እንግዲህ አሁን ቡናቷም ደሞ ያገራችን ውጥ ስለሆነች ያገርቷ ስም ስለሆነ ቡና ማገኛ አገር ስለሆነች ቡናችን በጥሩ ሁኔታ ደሞ ውጪ ያሉትም ቡናችን ጥራት ያለ ቡና ስለሆነ ቡናችን እንድገዙ ዋጋችን ደሞ የወደቀ ዋጋችን ካፍ ብሎ ቡና እንድሸጥና ደና ዋጋ እንድናገኝ እህ ተፈጥሮ ደናችን ደሞ የመንግስትም የማንም መንግስት ያለው ያልሆነ መንግስትም እርዳታ ምናም አድርጎ እህ ያሉ ደንዎቹ በኢንክብካብ እንድያዙና እንድይጠበቁ ከኛ ቀርቶ ለልጆቻችን ጥሩ ያዝኖ ቡናችን ጥሩ ያዝኖ ጫካችን አባታችን ያሰረከቡት እነዚህ ልጆቻችን ደሞ ከኛ ተረክቦ ጥሩ አርጎ ጠብቆ ለአገርቷ መጨረሻ ግቧላ እንድመታ እህንን ማስተላለፍ ወዳለው ለ ለዚህ ያሉት ሰዎችም ሆነ ለሌላ ለምሰማ እሄ በጥሩ ሁኔታ እንድይጠብቅ ደሞ አገራችን ውስጥ በከፋ ውስጥ ያለው ቡና ብቻ አይደለም በጫካ የተያዘች ናት ደና በማ በጫካ ውስጥ መሄዱት ደና ወንዞች አሉ ፋፋቲዎች አሉ ለለ ለለ ቅርሶቹ እኛ ከፋ ውስጥ ስላሉ ብዙ የታዩት ነገሮቹ ስላሉ እሄንን ማንም አጥቶ ውጪ ያሉት ሆነ ኢትዮጵያዊ እሄንን አይቶ እንዲደሰት እሄንን ጥሬ እናስተላልፋለሁ You told me before that they harvest from the top. 
how what happens when the beans drop? Yeah, uh, mostly, uh, actually it's difficult to harvest coffee from the wild because it's very long and it has very uh, tall. tall. So most of the time they are using, the, the, first of all they clear the ground. Okay. And they put uh, like something on the ground and they are waiting until it's dropped down. And sometimes the kids climb up and collect. Actually it is risky for them, uh, difficult to harvest from the wild. Tamara, what are you doing? With the necklace. She is big. ไอ้กาแฟเป็นเอกภูมิตัดแกะเอ๊ะบุโนมาจิบุโนมาจิอันมาจ่าสุกิอันอาจจะตัดมาเจอืมอันเดียวตัดมีดาร็อกเกตเ
The correlation of three rounds being a way to share coffee is so interesting because historically in Moroccan culture, tea or a tea is enjoyed in three rounds. The first is as bitter as life, the second is as strong as love, and the third is as soothing as death. In culture, an invitation to drink tea is a truly meaningful act of hospitality and friendship. Drinking tea is a savored, sedentary experience. A tea means, means a form of hospitality, but also tea is usually enjoyed together with family or friends. At your home, when you need to, to host somebody or a friend, you have to, to welcome it with a cup of tea. Africa, <laughs> The Berber people today are descendants of the indigenous pre-Arab inhabitants of Northern Africa. Throughout history, Berbers have been nomadic people. However, today most Berber families are farmers, traders, shop owners, or they work in tourism. Before we live in the desert in the middle of Sahara, before border of Algeria, and you move to here, to the village, and now we live here. And you primarily work with the tourists? Yes. That come here? Yeah, we work in the company. And while Morocco's official languages are Arabic and Berber Amazai, many of the Berber families I talked to voice their concerns about the historical language fading in the new generation. Since many teens and young adults are learning English, Spanish, and French instead of their Berber Amazai language. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to be welcomed into many Berber homes in the Sahara during my stay. And while I only picked up a few words and phrases to say in Amazigh, I can attest for the kindness and hospitality shown by the people of Morocco. I was told that the desert is one of nature's greatest healers. I was advised during my stay to be open to the Sahara because it has the ability to make one vibrate with happiness to be humbled and to find answers if we let it resonate within us. I understood these words the minute I walked barefoot in the dunes and I watched the sunset on my first night in the Sahara. <laughs> And I was shown a glimpse of my own roots the night we built a fire under the new moon in the cold sand, and I felt that I was meant to be right there, curled up against my camel Jimmy, listening to the traditional songs being sung, and dancing to the drums as the night went on. While coffee had always been the root of connecting for me, I knew that tea culture and tea traditions really provided a way for people around the world 
to concentrate, create, and connect. to stop on our journey to Ranaket and we all got to sit here with Ama <laughs> and Bula and Didi <laughs> Sabula, Didi and Sabula. <laughs> you know we just stopped and she just offered us tea so that was such a neat way to for us to all interact together and to sit down and I mean who else does that on the side of the road you just come up and you're like would you like some tea like some chai <laughs> While staying as a guest for a couple of nights at the Satkal Himalayan Ashram in the shadows of the Himalayas, we were generously invited over for tea by Mandana. Mandana was born in Iran and has found an incredible amount of peace here in India while raising her family. The proximity to the ashram also plays a role in her daily meditation. I grew up in the most unsafe place in the world. So for me, um, India has been the most safe place that I could ever imagine. I lived in Canada also for years, and then when we moved here, um, I remember the first time I heard a big sound outside my window. I don't know if it was a tire that got punctured or what it was. Normally I would jump because we've, we've had wars in my country, we've had missiles, we've had bombs, I've, I've experienced all of them. But this was the first time that I did not jump because I knew I'm in a safe place and whatever that sound was, is not going to affect me. I believe that if you think positive and you have all the positive intentions, everything positive happens. And if something sometimes goes wrong, that's also because something positive is to come out of that experience. Traditional Iranian way. You make it really dark and then we loosen it up with. I'm going to use this for so long. Oh, good. Yeah. So it's all about the color. There's a lot of negative energy out there that's going on. A lot of wars, a lot of things to be worried about. But what I try to do is to change myself and be a positive person, be an open-hearted person. Just try to be a human, you know, and hopefully reach the destination, which is becoming a divine human, like my guru has done, his guru has done, you know. It's just any of us can do it. It's just you have to have a goal and work towards it. And I think the more we... People think like-minded people think like that. They do like that. They, they work on it to become better human beings, work on this positive energy. We have prayers. We have different features to our meditation. We work for, um, eventually we work for world peace. We will. We can. It's just more people wanting to meditate, more people wanting to become peaceful, then the outcome will be different. There's such a sense of lightness. Even if you, in a half an hour meditation, you manage to mm, go in deep in that place where it's very quiet. There's awareness, but you're not really aware of your surrounding. So maybe, uh, best is to say, there's consciousness. You, you touch that. So even if it's for two minutes, when you come out of the meditation, you feel so revived so rejuvenated you know for me like sunday when i met you guys I, I i came home with so much energy because of that one hour meditation that i did in the morning whereas if i miss it it's totally different it's like a night where you sleep so late and the next day you're kind of you know low on energy so if you have a good meditation in the morning um, after that you feel full of energy so i think what helps is uh to be an empty cup and see what, what it's going to fill you up with. 
no expectations, so there will be no disappointments. And that's the definition of peace. Accept everything that comes your way as a divine blessing. Chai has a dominant role in India's history and economy. But it is also a large aspect of the culture as a social event. A social aspect that crosses socioeconomic backgrounds. And it is used as an extension of hospitality and friendship. I came upon his house and I'm a stranger and he just wants to be able to, to offer something to connect and to make me feel comfortable and that's offering a chai and I think that is just so special for him to be able to yeah. offer me something to drink and and you know and to want to do that but he's not able to and for that Danyavad uh, uh, Bhuji. Danyavad. Uh, <laughs> I witnessed the significance of tea daily throughout my stay. I began to crave those moments when none of us spoke the same language, but we understood each other over a cup of chai. At this point, tea as a sacred tradition really called to me. I had to learn more. I wanted to better understand how people connect to themselves, connect to nature, connect to others through tea. And to better understand this, I also wanted to see what tea means to someone whose whole life revolves around the leaf. The tea ceremony was uh, perfected about 450 years ago and uh, it's yes amazing that for more than four centuries we still do the same thing and uh, it was um, like a Zen monks like a kind of like a um, training and then this was created so that everyone everyone could enjoy the sand tea making um, all the movement is very slow and uh, we just watching it. Not only the, the person who does it, even when you are just watching, it really slows down the pace. You know, and in, in the end you may like maybe breathe the together you know, in the same way. And uh, so um, about ten minutes of making one cup of tea, you become just quiet and uh, you don't think anything but just watch someone who makes tea. Um, in fact, that's actually quite rare things to do, especially these days. You have the smartphone, you have the, the internet everywhere. Mm. You always have to do something all the time. But the tea ceremony allows you not to do anything, but just focus on one thing so that you can feel Mm, just calm. As a Japanese girl, it's a part of the path you have to go. So um, not anymore. But my mom, my mom's quite old-fashioned. <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, it's uh, I was 13 years old and uh, it was, I was kind of like reluctant. I didn't want to do this, but because my mother said, all right, I'll do it. But um, that was um, my very first time to see the key ceremony. I just loved it. Every single object we have like um, um, story or the history behind it. Just the one calligraphy or the flower arrangement, um, the tea kettle, tea balls itself, the, the bamboo crafts, the lacquerware, kimonos. Right? <laughs> mm. So every single that we, you can find for the tea ceremony is a very fine art. So um, that's another thing that we enjoy. So um, we knew our uh, organize a tea ceremony or you invited to a tea ceremony what we look forward is that you can always have the good time mm -hmm. that's why we keep training for years and years and years that basically you never stop you just keep practicing to um, create the the best atmosphere to make the best cup of tea for today the, the most important thing is that just you will enjoy this moment like i just put a lot of love into my team まあ、いろんな農作物が日本にはあるんですけど、あのー、まあ、いろんなね、あのー、仕事もある中で、この、やっぱり、なんだろうなやっぱこう、基本一人で、こう、どっちかったらこう、一人で全てをしたいタイプやし、で、こう、まあその、なんですか、自分の責任の中において、えー、すべてが完結できるような、そういう世界を、こう、夢見ていたんですけど、まあその中でこの、まあ、お茶っていうのが、たまたまですよ。たまたまその、アルバイトでこう、わずかに、来ただけやねんけど、まあその最初わずかっていう場所も知らんかったし、わずかがお茶の町だってことも知らなかった。その中で、たまたま、ここに来て、お茶と出会った。それがやっぱりこう、僕の人間性にこう、すごく合ってたわけですよね。まあ、ジャパンの中でも、イン日本の中でも、この、まあ、場所場所によって、こう、静岡とか、鹿児島、プレフェクチャーとか、こういろんな、こう、産地があって、まあその中でこのオブブチャインは、まあ京都の、京都エリアにあるんですけど、まああのー、まあ確かにその静岡とか、その鹿児島とかその京都とか、そのいろいろ産地によって特徴がお茶にもこう、土がもちゃうしね、この気候とか、グラウンドソイルとか、すべてが違うので、あのー、味も、香りも、すべてこう、違うんですよね。まあ、その中で、まあ、おぶうちゃんは、その、京都で作ってるんですけど、まあ、京都の中でもいろいろこうあるし、まあ、そんな、そんな中でですね、やっぱり京都としては、まあ、京都としてはというか、その、京都らしい、逆に言ったら、こう、京都っぽい、京都はこんなんちゃうかなみたいな、宇治茶はこんなんちゃうかなみたいな、そういうなんか、自分のイメージみたいな、もうそれにこう、近づけていきたいかなっていうところは、結局のところ、つまりは、お茶とは何なのか。
、お茶とは、うーん、パッションじゃないかなって。情熱ですね。僕のこの情熱が、こう、うまいことこうシンクロするような、合わさっていくような、それが、お茶なんじゃないかなって。思うんですよね。What is Japanese tea? One of big innovation of Japanese tea is steaming tea.、Yeah. Mm. Mm. So the steaming process is really special for the other tea.、Mm. So, well, steaming tea is Japanese tea.、Yeah. Steaming、uh, can stop、uh, oxidization and、uh, tea nutrition. It's an antioxidant. You know, Components, it's good for our health.、Yeah? So, one of the reasons why Japanese people h a v e such a long life、uh, basically, they drink a lot of tea. So, I don't know how much e f f e c t each other, but、uh, I believe it has some relationship.、Um, 2012, after 10 months、uh, from the big tsunami earthquake. In Tohoku area, we、uh, visited tsunami disaster area、uh, mm. over 40 places、uh, during、uh, 2000 kilometers driving.、Yeah. They survived because they were there. <laughs> so many people died, but、uh, some of them survived, and we met them. And uh, uh, we served、uh, lots of tea for them. Many places, and、uh, as they said,、uh, I really、uh, relief、uh, to, to drink tea, and、uh, I, I forgot the feeling since these days、yeah. mm, because they、uh, survive to drink water for survival,、uh, water and tea is almost the same,、yeah. just liquid. But、uh, the differ- big difference is、uh, just water is、uh, keep their life,、yeah? but uh, the uh, tea、uh, k e e p their heart. You know? So、uh, tea can connect each other and tea can make、uh, their life more smooth and more heartful. Both tea and coffee. Are vessels that help us to share moments with others. While I was focused on the way these drinks link us together, a reoccurring sentiment kept being highlighted while I was filming the simplicity yet overwhelming presence of water. It left me wondering what my hypothesized connected cup moments would look like, would be like, in communities where water is really scarce. メコンウルネジャタナイコナポランパパルネグニアドゥアンカナシャオラシチタンドウンティンカマタランドウンタンゴロンドウンタダナタタアイゴリンガランウンマテラシンバナゴウンタゴウンタダガラマトンギャラアムマニガリンガガテゴルバルギントゥナティカイマニギリネネネネモトナモモタナナゲディンシダナゲンゴロンナギテネマトンドゥニジョナンギャラモラタナンデ
How many times a day? Two. Morning and evening. You know, I Namu tu tawaga utanuka na tena kama wakuna maji akupika kama ujakula utaesa kufa na kama ujakunya maji utaesa kufa na kama tena mbusi haijakunya maji utaesa kufa mimi napenda unity kwa sababu unity wanasaidia sana kwa sababu kwa hakuna mwenye taingine anaisaidia mama kwa sababu mama akikosa pesa ya kulia watoto chakula anaenda anapata wa mama kama wako na chakula wanamchangia wanampatia na hata huyu anachukuru na kama hakuna mwenye kuna pesa wanaweza mtolea pesa ya group aenda anunue chakula ngonya ndara mdaga tumuri yuna tini vento no bonto mona ni mata ndara kwa mata ndara kwa hiyo tini vento no bonto mona kini ngona tini vento no bonto mona au mata ndara kwa yenu ta kai tinto mona ni ndo mtakando Iyo akan tamu nak apa? Nabi nak hari itu. Nabi ada lekat tuan najo. Nenya, amio nak bayar bukan tahu tamu nak itu. Kau, kini mai nyu ya jago. Ucu mati ya doang. Gay itu, gay itu. Ucu mangai itu kuli. Ucu mui. Nai yo bagu yon tamu nak apa? Niki bayar nak ni bayar itu tamu. Amik ada tamu nak doang. Tiapu yo. Ucu nak ke sumbai yo. Niki ada nasi. Niki ada nasi furah tu nopo nak bagi ni jenne. Mata dal. Am miki yo cagi ni jenne. Nai yo nok eh tuan ni. Kaya tu tu furah saya di cagi ni kaya. ยังน้ำตาบนน้ำตาลิ้นสองละแกก็ยงไก่กุ้งบินตาลิ้นรูปบุชนี่ก็ตัวมันตัวยังตัวมันบ้านเราบ้านเนี่ยเนี่ยเ
ye ke ni sia ne di yo ko na ko bon batanda yo ko na ke de ber ko bon bato school yo ko na no bon batanda Sababu sendo na kuchemcha akili. Kama unakunya chai kichwa itakuma. Unya chai subui utasikiza za mwalimu. Usatsa utachesa. Unaa tuata marafiki wakikuita mchese. Utakuchesa kwa sababu ya kunya chai. Kama basi umetoka pale nyu. Kama umetoka lakini kwenda kuni. Kwa umechoka unakuja unapikiwa chai na toa. Na toa basi nini? Choka. Kama tisha ida siran na dana kadi nganga na mata sa ini na mata ipa yo dana mata chai manyanda bas ne ye dey le kwetan ni ta mata ye ka ye ka ye ni ni par ba ma sa na ka ke da mata na ranga ko le na na ya ke dana je yo le mo le ba ma da ka wa a ambar ya kwe ta mata ye chai kama di chaka na ka chai na ke Tanggara kami di naga, jual mula tak mata. Naik naik lagi kini nak naik kiri kiri buat ni. She say like how first time to take the coffee was yesterday. Like, jual jual lagi lagi tu jalan jual. Nama nang kaya jalan ni ay, nama nang dogun kaya. Tiga bulan lagi tu jalan ni kemat tu nombor. Jual bagai tanah nang kaya jalan ni ay, nama nang dogun kaya jalan saya mana mat. Tiga jalan ni kemat. The women reminded me, and they live by the principle that we are stronger together. Daily rituals impact our lives in a variety of ways. Coffee will always be the drink that allows for me to connect with others and to connect with myself in the mornings. But without water, there is no tea. There is no coffee. Water truly is the first connected cup. It is the basic source of all of these connected moments. As humans, we have physical basic needs like food, shelter, and water. But we also have the mental and emotional need for companionship. And as I look back, I can't help but think, these people, these stories, these connections, it brought so much color and vibrancy back into my life.